So becoming the irreplaceable, stoic, masculine, bold, dedicated, militant, dedicated, 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 dedicated man <laughs> in society today is often frowned upon. And for so long in my youth, I never even knew what it was like to become that person. I didn't even know that I could become that person. And I'm still becoming more and more of that version of myself each day. And I'm getting more solidified each day. But I'm also realizing that the tolerance for not putting up with bullshit and then also being almost selfish to the extremes with your time is going to be so necessary. And something that I've noticed with a lot of different guys out and about is that the people that are specifically the men that are always talking to other guys that are in the gym that they, they talk for 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there, five minutes here, you know, then they, they, they're, they're in, they're ending up in the gym for three hours or something and they're not getting anything done. Drinking their Coke, eating, eating their candy. It's like, what the, what the hell is going on? And then at the coffee shop, you know, these guys get together every morning and they're not building anything. They're not talking about business or anything. They're talking about, you know, just the days 10, 15 years ago when they were in high school and how cool those times were and how much they smoked this or how much drinking they get did here. And it's like one thing that I've noticed about the men that stands out is that the dominant men and the actual masculine men are highly assertive and do not like to waste their time. I mean, nobody really likes to waste their time, but the dominant male is almost, to me, it seems as though he is the kind of person, if we were to take like the archetype of the of, of this dominant male, he does not like to waste his time on anything that does not bring him some kind of value or gain to his life. And something that I've noticed with a few people that I've worked with in consultations recently where I've had to not like I've had to stop working with a couple different people and then other people just have fallen off. And the people that are continuing to work with me and continuing to see results, it's like, <laughs> obviously they're doing something right. And so shout out to all of those people that may be watching this. You guys are, that are sticking around that are actually putting in the work, you know, we're all making mistakes. We're all on this self-improvement journey, but, and the, we're not done, right? We're never, we're never done, but it's almost like the, the terrain and the domain in which the people that are actually striving and that are actually listening <laughs> are seeing improvement. Huh? How, how crazy is that? How crazy is that? It's, it's crazy because <laughs> when, you, when you start to really exercise control over your own life, the things that you can control, that is, that's when you are becoming that person. And so as a side note, what I want to talk about as well in this video is whether or not monogamy has failed the West. Now, what is the difference between or what is the similarities between these two? Like what, what about monogamy failing in the West has to deal with the dominant male, the masculine male in our society? Well, in some sense, I think monogamy, it, it's, it's very challenging. And I'm asking this question genuinely because I genuinely am not sure anymore. Like I'm genuine, I'm genuinely not sure if, if monogamy is the answer to relieve the tension 
in our society. And I'm not saying polygamy is either. I'm not saying that at all. I, I don't know exactly what needs to happen, but I am starting to get to the point to where it seems to me as though the dominant males that are actually capable of having the resources and the attention and the time to place to multiple women. And what I mean by that is I'm not promoting fornication, not promoting adultery, not in any way, shape or form. That's not what I'm here to do, but I'm talking strictly about concubines and having perhaps even multiple wives. Now, what exactly is a concubine according to the scriptures in the Bible? Because concubines are biblical and it is biblical and it is a biblical right for a man to have concubines. And I understand that a lot of people listening to this may not agree. And I, look, I'm not even fully sure I want this. <laughs> like I've for my whole life, I've wanted a monogamous relationship with a loyal woman. You know, I want to commit, but, but people don't want to commit guys. Like people don't want to commit. They don't want to commit. So what do you, what do you do? Like, what do you do when you live in a society to where, you know, you're, you're wanting to be loyal. You want to actually show up, but the people around you don't, what do you do? Like, what, what can you do to prolong and to actually get to reproduce, you know, what kind of society do we have to live in to get to this point to where if you want to be loyal and you want to be committed, you want to build a family, you want to build a legacy, but the people around you don't really seem to want to do that. A lot of the men nowadays were just not masculine anymore. And I was once that guy, like I was once that beta male. I understand what that's like. I understand what it's like to not be assertive. I understand what it's like to sacrifice my own values for the sake of a woman's feelings, which I highly recommend you never, ever fucking do ever. Don't ever do that. We we're, we're always taught that, no, oh, this is how it's supposed to be. You know, the, don't hurt her feelings. Who the f cares about her feelings anymore? She's not, she's not innocent. She's not pure. She's been with everybody else in, in the community. And I'm getting, it's, it's almost so crazy to me. Like it's unfathomable to me how many women are acting single with me just before I find out that they have a boyfriend or something. It's absolutely bonkers. Like it's so crazy to me. These women are not loyal in any way, shape, or form nowadays. And social media has, I genuinely believe, destroyed the opportunity for monogamy to exist in some some sense. It, it's, it's insane out there, guys. It's insane. I've been talking to a lot more different kinds of women recently, really trying to put myself out there because I realized that you know, if I'm not making an effort to actually create something of value, then it's not going to happen. <laughs> right? Like, and I knew that, but I also knew that I had to take action sooner or later. And I'm t now to that point to where I feel as though I'm ready for that next level. But guess what, guys? So many people are not ready for that next level. They can't even show up for themselves. How are they supposed to show up for their family if they can't even show up for themselves? They are so lost. They have lost themselves. They have just completely lost themselves. They don't know which way they're going. They don't have anybody to lead them. And they're told that the leaders that are trying to lead them to a better life. We're trying to get these women out of the streets. <laughs> like we're trying to get these women out of the, the ringer, but they don't want that. They, they don't want to, they don't want to, cause they don't know any other life. Most of these women, anyway, most of these women, the women that are watching, 
that I know that are traditional women watching my videos, I know that you guys are not this way. I'm very much aware because I've communicated with you in the comments and in consultations, etc. But one of the other questions that I have about monogamy is whether or not this is a, a way for us to not populate righteously. I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. I'm talking these things through because it's on my mind and I think it's something worth talking about. And I am aware that I do not have all of the answers, but I also know that I can bring a different kind of perspective. And again, I'm not advocating for fornication or, or anything of the sort or adultery. Now, as a definition of what adultery is and what's fornication, fornication is basically whoremongering as a man anyway. Whereas the woman, you're, 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 you're the whore. So the man is just going sleeping around with whoever he can, which I don't condone. But then you have the, the women's side that are sleeping around with whoever she can, whoever wants her to open up her legs, she'll, she'll do it. They're easy lovers, these kinds of fornicators. But for the adulterers, adultery is when you actively pursue someone that's married. So whether a woman is pursuing a man that's married or a man that is pursuing a woman that's married, that's adultery. And both those are not good in the eyes of God, and you will be punished for it. And you can believe me when I tell you because I've had experience with mar married women in the past. This was years ago, and I did not know exactly if she was married or not. I knew she was talking to somebody, but I didn't know if she was married. <laughs> I didn't know she had a family. And sure enough, that's, that's, that was the case. And so I, I knew at that moment that because we had, I would say, I'm confessing my sins here. It was more of a emotional affair. We never did anything intimate. I'm not going to say who it was or what happened or where it was, but it was definitely an emotional affair for sure. And I learned from that experience that I need to learn how to vet my women more properly. And that's what I'm telling you guys to do, especially if you want to be a masculine man in this society. You've got to learn how to vet who's going to not destroy your life and who's going to destroy your life. And really, if anybody has a boyfriend or a girlfriend that they're supposed to be quote unquote monogamous to, but they're still keeping their options open. They're still letting, they're still acting as if they're single. They're still dressing in a way that makes them look like they're single. They're still talking to multiple people of the opposite gender. You know, this is something else I've noticed is that a woman that really, really likes and has love for a man, she will not give other men the time of day. Absolutely not. She will not. And I know this because I've seen married women at the gym that are actually righteous women. And they do not even like they, they don't talk to anybody. <laughs> and I, all I can think to myself is like, wow, that that's, that's a good woman. That's a good woman right there. But something else I've noticed is that they're all a little bit older. They're all in their late thirties or early forties. And these women at the gym, they still look good. Like they're fairly attractive. I mean, would I want to start a family with one of them if they weren't married? No, probably not. But I'm just saying that they've kept themselves healthy and it shows and good for them. And I'm really, I really hope the best for them. They deserve that kind of life. If they're actually going to live a lifestyle of righteousness. But for the, 
people of nowadays, <laughs> like, like the, the, this is my generation, you, like our generation, whoever's watching this, that may be in like 18 to 30, 35, it's like, it's a completely different world. It's a completely different landscape. It truly is amazing. And again, I can't tell you how many women have acted single trying to pursue me, putting themselves in my vicinity, bending over in front of me, <laughs> or or playing with their hair in front of me, or like whipping their hair in front of me, or staring me down when I'm just walking by and I can see them out of my peripheral vision. And... I can tell that they have this visceral desire in their eyes because the eyes do not lie. And yet two minutes later, they're, they're talking to this guy and they, they, they give him a kiss and I'm like, what the, f like, what the hell? <laughs> and I, you know, it turns out to be like their boyfriend or their husband or something. And it's just like, yo, what, what are you doing? Like, what are you doing? If you're not happy in that relationship, why the hell are you in it? But it's these women, man. They Like, these kinds of women, they just need the attention. They need that emotional support of the beta male so that they can try to get to that, as I described in the other, in one of my recent videos the other day, it's like, the appetizer or the main course, they may have the main course as the boyfriend or the husband, but then they see this new guy, this new appetizer. And they're like, Oh, I want to try that. It's like, well, you've already ordered your food. Well, but I want that now. This just goes to show how non-rational women can be sometimes. And men, you understand that, you're a logical thinking person. If you put time and effort into a woman, she's going to reciprocate. No, 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 no. That's not the case. It's not the case, brother. That's not the case. And women that are watching this may be kind of like, what? Well, something that I've noticed is that women often respond better to me when I am so focused on what I'm doing and yet I can still maintain a emotional connection with them in a time where we don't see each other for a minute or two. And when I mean a minute or two, I mean like a day or two or, or even a week, even a week or two, you know, we, we had a connection, we had a spark there. Then two weeks later, uh, we don't, after we don't see each other for a while, like we pick it up, like it, we just never left off. And yet when I still keep pursuing these relationships, it's almost like I can just see where it's going and it's not going to be anywhere that is good. Like when I see you <laughs> right now before me, it's like, oh, now you are, you look the same, but you are, you, you've changed. You have lost your innocence. Like you are, you are going behind somebody's back there. You're, you're going behind somebody's back and it's not mine because we're not like completely official or anything. So who you who are you going behind your, like somebody's back for and why, if you're not interested in that person, why do you, it just doesn't make sense to me, but I understand that women need that. I understand that women need that kind of connection, even though it really just hurts their chances in the long run. And it's really not helping them, but they don't want to hear that. They don't want to see that. And some of them just want to keep stirring up envy and jealousy for God knows what. But this is a question that I'm really starting to consider is whether or not monogamy has failed our society or not. And 
what is the possible solution? Is concubinism the solution as a man? Because as a righteous man that does have plenty of options, like I've got, I've got plenty of options. I just don't always want to, I just don't want to follow through with some of them because I know that they're not completely righteous women. Now, could my, could I pour my spirit into them? Possibly. Like I could, I could pour my spirit into you. I like, let me pour me, my spirit into you so that you can see the bigger picture. And it's almost like when these women come back around after they say they have boyfriends, I'll, sometimes all I can think to myself is like, yeah, what were you thinking? Like, what were you really thinking getting with that guy? Come on. Now I can't take you seriously because I know I'm, I know I'm a winner and I'm not saying this to be boastful or anything. I know that I'm a winner. I know I have what it takes to succeed. I know that I have that dedication. I know that I have that ambition. I know how to talk to women, right? I know how to treat women well. I like treating women well, but I do not treat women that don't deserve to be treated well, well. I say, you're free to leave. There's the door. Nobody's forcing you to stay. I'm not going to apologize for being who I am. I'm just me. And if you don't like that, that's fine. You can leave. There are plenty of other women that are waiting to, to get that opportunity to be with me. And I'm not, again, I'm not saying this because like I, I'm, I'm boasting about it. I'm just saying that that's the kind of person that I've made myself into. I was not always this way. I was not always this way in the fucking slightest. <laughs> I could barely get a woman to look at me at one point in time. And so it's taken a bit of time for me to adjust to this new kind of this newfound attraction that I've been able to create with women now. But that's part of developing yourself into the man that you want to be. And so you've got to just be careful out there. And I'm genuinely seriously considering considering whether or not to start just treating women like concubines altogether. I don't really take women seriously to begin with as far as like, and I don't mean that in a way that is like misogynist or sexist or anything. I mean, I know women's emotions are super flighty. I know women's nature. I know, I understand that the female brain and the female itself is like a cat that just wants to come and go into a man's life as, as it pleases I understand that. But I also understand that it may not be the case that like, cause a concubine is a second wife, right? That that's the, the biblical definition is a, a, a secondary wife. She doesn't get quite the elevation status of wife and the kids that are maybe birthed, from the concubine, you know, they're still required to get fed and shelter and all of these things, but they're not really entitled to inherit certain land or certain, uh, just certain parts of the inheritance. And that's according to Genesis as well. That's something that happens in with Abraham. I think it's uh, Genesis is it 25, six or seven, something like that? It's Genesis 25. That whole chapter at least is describing what happens with Abraham's concubine. Someone can quote me on that or look that up more after this video. But the point is, is that it may be time to start taking a deeper look, if you are a masculine man that has actually got something going for yourself, 
it's time to become that man and to really be that man. No fear of, of, of being someone that you're not. Just be who you are. And with that being said, I hope this message was useful and insightful. And until next time, peace be with you.